talk to you from a book that Michelle McLean is the author of, and it's called 13 Keys to Receive and Release a Prophetic Word. Since we've been talking about speaking the prophetic word, as you all know, in Proverbs chapter 18, the Bible says that the power of life and death is in our tongue. We have the power <clears throat> that works in us, which is the Holy Spirit, to change our course, to change everything that's in our, but in our uh, destiny. But here's the key to everything that we, we kind of miss sometimes, is that we got to get used to these words and put them in action. They're called faithfulness and commitment and consistency. Faithfulness, commitment, and consistency. Because we have to, the Bible say that the just shall live by faith. That means if we are walking by faith, living by faith, we can speak the prophetic word of God over our life and it shall be done. Mark eleven twenty two 22 through 24 tells us that whatever we ask and believe, we shall receive. So before we can even begin to think about speaking God's prophetic, uh, prophetic words of life and power in our life, over our life, our family life, business, whatever, we have to become faithful, we have to become committed, and we have to become consistent. So inconsistency is not good at all. Uh, in fact, in the book of Revelation, uh, when uh, Jesus told John to write to the churches, he talked to one by being lukewarm. He said, I would that you would be hot or cold, but you lukewarm and just want to just uh, vomit you up or spit you out. That's because of inconsistencies. If we are consistent with God's uh, uh, word and, and faithfulness to God's word uh, and committed to kingdom work, then we could begin to not just speak uh, the prophetic word of God, but we would see God putting action to it. So I want to talk about the 13 keys to receive and release a prophetic word. Now, remember this, Eli, you all know the story about Eli, how Eli actually taught uh, Samuel how to discern, respond, and become sensitive to the voice of God. And this is what we, this is very crucial, uh, because when you are in the Spirit of God, you have the Spirit of God, you have to become sensitive to the Spirit of God. I'm going to say these things again, you got to be faithful, committed, and consistent. You have to be consistent in what you do. Now, again, remember the story with, with, with Samuel, how he went to sleep and woke up three different times because he thought he heard Eli calling him. And then Eli began to teach him how to become sensitive to the voice of God. We have to become sensitive to the voice of God. When God is speaking to us, we have to know. Jesus say that my voice, my sheep know, and another voice they would not follow. So we have, to become, uh, we have to become sensitive. You know, how do you do that? Let me see if I can share with you in the natural to let you understand the spiritual. Just like when you have a, a, a baby, brother and sister Brown, y'all son, when he was a baby, or even while he's young now, uh, you all are sensitive to his cries. You are sensitive to his need. What am I, I mean about that? Even though... He may not be sleeping in the same room with you, but when you go to sleep at night, you go to sleep with a sense of sensitivity that you have to sleep, but yet you have to be alert because you have a child that's not in the same room. So spiritually, what I'm telling you all spiritually is, is that same way Elah taught Samuel how to, to discern. You have to first discern to find out if it's God speaking. And then you have to respond and become sensitive to the voice of God. When God first started dealing with me years ago, when I was a, a new convert, new in the ministry, uh, his voice was so loud and so clear. Uh, and as I began to mature and become older and older, then I felt abandoned till I realized that God had not abandoned me. It's just that he didn't have to speak as loud anymore because I was sensitive to his voice. 
So prophets can only teach you how to cooperate with the activity of the Spirit, not how to manufacture the Holy Spirit activities. So you see, we can, we can, we can only understand what we are taught, but no one can teach us how to manufacture the Holy Spirit activity. The Holy Spirit lives in each one of us. So you don't have to go far. The Spirit is always there. You just listen. Sometimes he speaks to your spiritual conscience. You know, sometimes you can be sitting there, you experience it, and you just may hear, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, you may hear the Spirit or the voice of the Lord or the Spirit speaking. And he may be saying, Tiffany, real softly, you know, you know, Tiffany, real softly, because watch this. If you're busy about doing your day and somebody scream out your name real loud and quick, it's going to kind of like jigger you a little bit, give you a little scare, you know. Uh, but if they just call your name normally, so see when the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks gentle. That's why we have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Uh, oftentimes you all have heard uh, Elder uh, uh, Kenneth gave his testimony how uh, he would be riding down the street. And the Spirit of God would tell him, don't go there, turn this away. And, and, and he follows suit. The only time he got in trouble is when he decided to go his own way. So we have to be sensitive to the voice of God, okay? Key number one, keys to receive and, to receive and release a prophetic word. Because watch this, you can only release what you have received. If you have not received, you cannot release. So we, we all have the power to release a prophetic word. A lady on the conference call line uh, Monday night said that she has been so blessed calling in. She's, she lives in Detroit, Michigan. She said, my life has tremendously been blessed since I've been calling in on this prayer line every Monday night and on Thursday nights. She said, you know, I call in on Monday nights and she say, I realized that I needed to share my testimony, not with other believers, but with non-believers. And this is what it's about. You're releasing a prophetic word of life. I told you all when I was in North Carolina preaching in a leadership conference. And uh, as I began to speak, uh, and, and, and this is what you have to understand. You don't have to stop a sermon. And then call a line to prophesy. When you are speaking a prophetic word of God, it is in your messages also. And as I was speaking, I went to uh, uh, releasing a prophetic word of God into the atmosphere about when I was young and how life had just beat me down and I was just ready to commit suicide and ended it. And I was saying how... I looked up on a building while driving down 16 over by the Astrodome, and I thought about how I can go up there and just jump off and end it. And then I start reasoning with myself and say, you know, uh, it'd be my luck. I'll live through it and be a vegetable state. And then I started contemplating on I can just get in a vehicle and go the opposite way on the freeway. Well, when I was speaking that prophetic word in the atmosphere, it was a Caucasian brother that was sitting back there next to Bishop David Howe, and, and I saw him the whole while that, and that's why you got to be sensitive to the Spirit because I was, I was preaching, and then all at once the Spirit of God shifted, and I began to speak a prophetic word, and uh, so after the, the gentleman left, uh, Bishop Howe stood up, he said, Bishop, you don't mind, I just need to give a testimony. Say, the gentleman who was sitting on side of me said that when he was walking by, he was on his way to go and get up on top of the building and jump off and commit suicide, but it was such a powerful anointing that when he passed by the door, he had to come in. And then as he was listening to, to your testimony, he said it helped him to want to live more. So you see, we receive, we release. You release the prophetic word of God on any level, whether it's a blessing, whether it's correction, whatever it may be. So the first thing is, put on your priestly garments. That's the first keys to receive and release a prophetic word of God. You have to put on your priestly garment. 
the priestly dimension must return uh, to prophetic people. Prophetic uh, people must put on their priestly garments and spend quality time in the presence of God. You know, when you have that time, whatever that time may be. Sometimes my quality time is like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning when everything is shut down and, and, and I just be able to lay there and begin to talk to God and spend some time with God. Uh, so you have to understand your responsibility to minister to God and then listen to God's people. Worshiping God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Worship is the doorway to receiving the revelation from God. Remember I told you all in Psalms 22 and 3 is that in one translation David said, he said that, that God's throne was in the praise of Israel. And I got excited because I realized that if you would turn there real quick just to look at it, Psalms 22, when I thought about it, I got excited because I realized is that that can even apply to us too. He says, but you are the holy God. The praise of Israel is like a throne for you. So our, our throne, our praise, brother David was saying, your praise is that your, you know, uh, the praise of Israel is like a throne for you. So we think about it. When we get into praise and worship and get involved in it, you know, God loves that because it becomes like a throne for God. I was reading the basic Bible English. So it's like a throne for God. And, and, and what does a throne mean? A throne is where one sits and rules from, you know. So God rules from there. God not only just rules from there, but God also speak concerning us what he want us to have or what he want us to do. So that's what we have to understand. So, you know, we have to understand our responsibility is to minister to God. And, and that's the part that, that I like when Isaiah said, they that wait upon God shall renew their strength. Now, when he talk about waiting, it's not in the sense you just sitting idle, waiting. It's about ministering to God. Worshiping God. When was the last time you told God, God, I love you, you're so awesome? When the last time you just lift your holy hands to God and bow your heads and worship? Just say, God, thank you. You know, when, when, when worship and praise is going on uh, in our service, you know, the, the, the thing that, that you ought to do is try not to focus. Get your attention off people or what people is doing or saying, you know, and, and get into that praise and then when you get into that praise, just like uh, David said with Israel, their praise is like your throne. Our praise will become like God's throne. Well, God will, will rest right there, rule from right there. And when he rules from right there, things change in our lives. That's when the prophetic word of God is released and you can start declaring it. See, when you receive it, then you can declare. You can start declaring you know, oh God, you know, I declare this, I declare healing, I speak deliverance, I speak this, I speak that. You can do those type things. But only when you receive, when you receive that prophetic word of God, then you can release it, okay? Amen. Y'all still with me? So, worshiping God for the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Worship is the doorway to receiving a revelation from God. So, whatever... Uh, uh, you're seeking God for. God will give you a revelation. See, your worshiping is a revelation. It's a doorway to receive that revelation from God. So that's why it is so important that you take praise and worship seriously. Even the singers, when you're up singing, you know, don't think about I'm a praise and worship singer. You know, think about I have to enter into because if I enter into praise, then my praise will become like the throne for God. And then once I uh, get that throne of God, and then while he sits on his throne, now you worship him by saying, God, you're so awesome. God, you're so powerful. God, if you're sick, you try God, you're a healer. If you're wrapped up in something, God, you're a deliverer. deliverer. When you begin to worship him, see, worship is the doorway of receiving. God will, will give you revelation. 
That's why, you know, and it's going to take you a while to, to, to really, because if you're not sensitive to the Spirit of God, it's going to take you a minute, but you have to be, uh, you have to progress with it, you know, to see. That's why Sunday I was able to tell certain ones certain things because as I looked at them, I was not looking directly at them natural, but I was looking far beyond them into the spiritual realm, into a whole nother dimension. That's why I was able to say, hey, look, God got a house. It is a house. You can get it. You know, there's a house you're seeking. You can get it. And I was able to tell them the color of the brick and how the door is made. Because when you enter into that spiritual realm of God, you can see things. John said in Revelation, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He carried me up and he showed me. So you see, God will show you things. It, it is not hidden from the believers, okay? So now, uh, the apostle John paints a prophetic picture of the lifestyle of a prophetic, uh, pro prophetic minister. Look at John chapter 21 and verse 20. John chapter 21 and verse 20. And, you know, because I, I like the, the basic English, uh, you all can read it in your version. Uh, that's John chapter 21 and uh, verse 20. Uh, when you have it, say I have it. John chapter 21. Uh, bear with me. That's the downfall to, to gadgets. Chapter 21 and verse 20. Look what he says in John 21 and 20. Peter turned around. He saw another disciple. It was the disciple that Jesus loved, talking about John. This disciple was following them. He was the man who had been very near to Jesus at the supper. The disciple had asked Jesus, Lord, who will sell you to your enemies? See, this verse shows how we must lay our head on the breast of Jesus and listen to the rhythm of his heartbeat being filled with the breath of God. We, in turn, breathe unto others the breath of life, receiving from encountering the creator. We must develop relationship and fellowship with God who knows everything about everything. See, John had that relationship with him. He was called the, the beloved disciple. Uh, you too can become that. God loves us so much. That's why you need to become sensitive, dependent on him, leaning on him, loving him, trusting him, having faith. Because, see, our faith is what pleases God. See? And, and it's just, you know, uh, let's look at the, the next key. All of the Lord's words, key number two, all of the Lord's word, no matter in what form we hear them, must be quickened and revealed by the Holy Spirit. Again, we're talking about 13 keys to receive and release a prophetic uh, 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 word of God. We, we talked about, we started talking about this Sunday uh, and last week. So again, key number two, all of the Lord's words, no matter what form we hear them, must be quickened and revealed by the Holy Spirit. Don't care if you hear them by singing, preaching, teaching, or whatever, we have to be quickened. Quickened means adding life to ordinary words. See, because that's why the Bible tells us how we speak with our tongue. If we have faith, we add to what we are speaking, to ordinary words. The Greek word for quickened means to make alive and give life by spiritual power to arouse and invigorate, invigorate. You know, so, see, when we speak words, they're words of life. Think about what John and uh, Peter, the brother at the gate called Beautiful, and they walks up to the man that was lame. Say, you know what, silver and gold we have not, but such as we have, we give unto you. They grab them by the hand and lift him up. Power, words of power is what we have to do in any situation. The word Jesus speaks has life and vitality. Other words are just dead language. The message can come in a variety of ways, flashing of pictures, scriptures, verses, sentence, fragments, or impressions. It doesn't make a difference how. It's just the fact that we have to have faith in the word of God. Number three, activate faith to operate in the gift of prophecy 
much as you activate your faith to receive the gift of salvation. See, I'll say it again. You have to activate your faith to operate in the gift of prophecy. Much as you activated your faith to receive the gift of salvation. So, we prophesize according to the portion of our faith. The Bible said that God has given every man a portion of faith. The word proportion refers to a ratio. You can have faith to prophesy to one person or faith to prophesy to a hundred people. It's all based on the uh, uh, proportion of your faith. The Apostle Paul challenged Timothy to stir up or rekindle and arouse from dormancy. The gift that was given to him in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6 when he says stir up the gift that is in you. So we all have that gift, but you have to arouse it. You have to make it alive. See, if you're doing nothing, if you're doing nothing to put your faith to work, then your faith is dead. And if you, if watch this here, if you're doing nothing to put work to your faith, your faith is dead. And if you're working but don't put faith to your work, your work is dead. They work together. So if you have faith, you have to put it. That's why I'll say it again. I always say, I don't like to hear preachers say, uh, my help done came now. Because that means all that 10, 15 minutes you were doing ahead of time means nothing. It was dead language. And watch this. It probably could have been more, more e e effective if that person would have just did it in faith. See? See, and, 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 and what we have to get to the point to is that we have to know what it means. Faith is so important to God. Again, the Bible says you can't please him without it. I don't care how good we sing, preach, how good we look. How, if, if there's no faith involved, then we can't please God. And see, let me share something with you. When you begin to receive from God, it's because you have pleased God. See, and the way you please God is releasing your faith into the atmosphere and into that dimension where the Bible says that all of our blessings is in heaven with Christ. So when we release our faith to trust God's word and don't doubt it, as I told you all last week, if you do not doubt it, you might want to turn the heater off back there. If you do not doubt him, guess what? The Bible said, whatever you speak, again, you can have, uh, it, 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 was, it was in Mark 11, 22 through 24, when Jesus told the disciples, if you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, or you, uh, first thing he said, if you believe in God, or trust in God, or have faith in God, you can speak to this mountain and tell that mountain to be moved. So we can speak the prophetic words of God, but it has to be with faith. Heaven will move on your words if it's faith. Now, why? Why would heaven do that? Because when you are walking in the spirit, you are speaking God's word. And what did God say about his word? He said, I send my word forth and it shall accomplish what I send it to do and shall not return back unto me void. What else he said about his word? That his word is quick and powerful. See, all we have to do is learn to do it by faith. Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. Uh, the, the, the fourth key is ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Matthew chapter 7, look at that. You know, and, and this is what, listen, watch this here. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to share something with you all. It makes sense, right, that if you have tried everything and nothing has worked and someone asks you to try this, it's not going to cost you nothing to try. You may as well try it and see if it's going to work. He says in verse 7, go on asking God for what you need and then you will receive. Go on looking for what you need and then you will find it. King James say, knock, and it shall be open, seek, and you shall find. I'm reading the e easy English, okay? I'm in verse 7. Go on knocking at the door, 
and then God will open it for you. God will open revelation. God will open vision. God will open the dream. God will open his windows and pour out blessings. See, that, that's how you, you cannot buy it. See, most people think when they give their tithes and offerings, you're not buying a blessing. You're simply saying, I'm showing you, God, that I'm going to be obedient to your word. I, I heard, you know, why are we talking about that real quick on tithes? I, I, I never heard it talk like this before, but a uh, uh, pastor, Joseph, uh, I can't think of his last name. He's the Korean pastor. Pastor Joseph made a whole lot of sense. He said, people say that we're not under the law. He say, uh, exactly, you know, we're, we're not under the law concerning tithes. And, uh, you know, and I can't really get it the way he got it. He made it so plain He's, because he brought it that we're under that new dispensation. Close to what I told you all is under the same order of Melchizedek, the tithes and the offering. You know, I'm going to go back and review, see if I can find his message because it was a real point on that. But I want you to focus on ask. Everyone shout ask, ask. see, see. and not. not. See, let me, let me see, let me see. Let me see, let me see, let, let me try this. Brother Billy, you hungry. Go ask Trina for a piece of bread. See, Shirley, you are lost. Go ask Dominica for directions. You know. See, now, now, now watch this as you come back to your seat. See, just when, when you have a need, See, yeah, thank you. We, we got y'all. He must be really hungry. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, look, so now watch this here. Check this out now. Ask, seek, and knock. So, you see, you only going to get what you ask or what you seek and what you knock for. And that's why he say, ask God. See, whatever we need, God has it. We can ask God for a prophetic word. Many are afraid to initiate conversation with the Heavenly Father because of fear of deception or demonic interference. There, there, you know, notice Jesus states that if you ask the Father for gifts, he would not give you something contrary to what you ask. God, our Father, who is so in love with human beings, loves to hear the sound of a human voice asking and inquiring of him. That's how much God loves us. That's why the angels say, God, what is man that thou so mindful? See, we have the, Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call me and I will answer you. That's what God said. And show you great and mighty things. See, that's what I love about God. When, you, when you're sensitive in the spirit and you're walking in the spirit and you have faith in God and you call upon God, not only will God answer you, but God will show you. God will show you. You know, God, God, he said in Jeremiah 33 and 3, as he spoke to them, he says, call me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Mighty comes from the Greek word uh, batsar, batsar, B-A-T, batsar, S-A-R, batsar. Everyone say basar. All right, which means secrets and mysteries inaccessible things so you see you you don't have to worry about demons and and interference with demonic spirits you don't have to worry about all of that because when you are talking to God there is nothing in between that can hinder you and your relationship with God except your lack of faith your lack of trust and your lack of believing in God so God will reveal the secrets are the mystery to you. And these are how things go. Uh, see, most people think, they, they, they look, and, and, and they were basically, and, and here's what I never want you all to do, thank you, is that all of us are men and women just like you, all, all of, of the men and women of God. We all are human. But here's what it is, like, I, uh, like I've always said, is that you have to learn even if you dislike the man, respect the anointing that's on his life. Because watch this. The anointing, and most people say this and they got it so wrong. The anointing is, is not just for an individual. The anointing is for the mass. 
See, whenever God pour out his anointing upon you, it's not just for you. It's for this world. And see, right now, we just have a whole lot of anointed nothings. A whole lot of people that's anointed but not doing nothing. You know, there are times that the Spirit of God probably speak to you while you in, in the grocery store or at work or something and, and give you specific instructions on to say something to somebody and, and, and you, you, you bail out. First thing you say, I don't know them. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy. That's a stranger. They may beat me up. What the Bible says, that if you lose your life for the sake of the gospel, you'll receive it again. You have to realize that God is more powerful than anything. And I'm guilty of it too. I'm guilty of it too. You know what? How are you going to ever witness an eyewitness of God's great power if you're too afraid to move? You know? That's why you got to rebuke self. I remember a, a, years ago sitting in a restaurant. It was this little boy that was in a wheelchair. Uh, and he was like deformed, couldn't talk, you know, kind of twisted. And as I was sitting there, see, and that's another thing. When you have the spirit of God, compassion is so strong in your life. When I looked at that little boy, my heart went out to him. And, and the spirit of God the Spirit of God. And you know what? It's safe to be like that because if you're not sure that it's the Spirit of God or your flesh, then it may be, it, it, you can't go wrong if you sit still or if you move. You know, and I sit there and the Spirit of God, you know, and my desire, I just wanted to go and ask them, can I pray for him and just hold his hands and just pray for him. But then, you know what? Can I share something with you all? Can I share a prophetic word? Prayer is not enough to move God. Well, what do you mean about that? Anybody can pray, but you have to have faith in your prayers. Prayer is just a, a, a communication between you and God. You have to believe that God is a real God on the other end of your prayer. Stop all that nonsense too, I hear people say. Uh, just, just pray. Dial one, one, one. one look, y'all, look. Look, I, I don't hear it around here, but if I do, you know I'm going to have to have a conversation. Because I'm going to get right. If, if you brave enough to get here on a platform or in God's house and say, just dial one, one, one. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stop you right there and pick up my cell phone and I'm going to dial it. And then I'm going to tell you that don't work. I can't get God. We, we can't keep trying to put God in things that sound good. See, that's what we, we be bamboozled by. It sounds so good. And people go to hollering, yes, Lord, just one, one, one. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. You know what? And I'm like, it don't work like that. See, God never say, when you pray to me, pray to me, you're going to get me and my Son and the Holy Spirit. They all work together in sync. See, God said that, see, you got, when you believe that you are talking to God and you have faith in what God's word says, then God will begin to move on your behalf. See, Stephen had so much of faith until when they were stoned at him, the Bible said Jesus stood up. And Stephen, Stephen spoke out and said, Lord, he spoke a prophetic word in the atmosphere to save a lot of people from dying because he spoke Jesus' the same words. He said, Father, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they are doing. And mercy was granted. Number five, God will immediately speak something to bless the body. See, prophecy is not just for individual, but prophecy is for the body of Christ. See, God's first command was to bring light to chaos in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3. God speaks as a means to bring life and order. Since the moon and the sun were not created until the fourth day, the light is the presence of illumination in general. Prophetic ministers should speak the light to every dark situation. You can speak it. You know, the Bible says this, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So if there is no signs that is following you, it is an indication that you do not believe. 
because God's word does not fail. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall be healed. They shall cast out demons. Number six, focus is the key. Look in the spirit. Ask yourself, what do I see? Remember I told you all my testimony when I was first uh, empowered with the spirit of God. The first thing God wanted to know before I could receive power or anything, what I saw. See, God want to know what you see. Because if you, and look, I'm not talking about looking at a chair or a car or another human being. You can see out of your physical eye. The question is, what do you see in the spiritual realm? Because when you can see it in the spiritual realm, it is a, it is, it is, it is, a, it, it is, uh, it is an indication that the spirit of God is moving in your life. Because you cannot see in the spiritual through the natural. See, the only way you can see into the spiritual, it has to be God. Remember Elijah stood up on the mountain. They were getting ready to fight a war. And just so happened, they look, and the lad say, Elijah, this don't look good. It is more of them, and it's just me and you. Elijah say, God, open up the lad's eyes that he may see what I see. And watch this. When God opened up his eyes, he focused, and he realized that there was a great army that was on their side. So we have to be able to look into the spirit. You know, what do I see, feel, or have annoying about the situation? See, God speaks through your spirit. It sounds like you. Look at Isaiah chapter 21. Isaiah 21 and verse 3, 3 and 4. Isaiah chapter 21. And we're going to look at verses 3 and 4. All this hurts me. Bad pains attack me. They are like the bad pains that a woman feels. She feels them when she has a baby. What I hear bends me over, and that is why I cannot listen. What I see frightens me, and that is why I cannot look. It confuses my mind. I am very much afraid. I wanted a quiet evening, but now that quiet evening has become a time when I am very much afraid. So you see, you have, to, you have to be able to see. And sometimes what you see is not going to be the brick house with a white picket fence. What you see sometimes may not be a Mercedes Benz. You know, you may see that somebody is getting ready to die. You may, you may see some things. Okay, number seven. God will quicken one sentence, word, picture, or thought to your spirit. That's why when you be praying and asking God, and you're in the spirit, and you're asking God for something. That's why it's very imperative that you listen attentively when the word of God is going on. Get involved in praise and worship because it is any one of those areas that God <clears throat> will quicken you, either with a word, a sentence, a picture, or a thought to your spirit. Then you must exercise your faith to release the revelation given. It is like a piece of string on a sweater. Give it one pull and let the words flow. You have to open your mouth wide and God will fill it. Look at Psalms 81 and 10. Psalms 81 and 10. And see, this is what, what we should be doing, ladies and gentlemen, because of the God that we serve. Psalms 81 and 10. Look what he says. I am the Lord your God. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice and Israel did not obey me. And so verse, that was verse 11. Verse 12 says, and so let them follow their own ideals. They did whatever they wanted. God has divine order. You know, he said Israel wouldn't do it. They wouldn't listen to me. They wanted to follow their own ways. So he said, go ahead and let them do whatever they want to do. Verse 13, he says, I wanted my people to listen to me. I wanted Israel to walk in my ways. So when God speaks to us and shows us something, he wants us to follow it. 
The Holy Spirit will not move your mouth or override your will. You must give voice to what he is speaking. Amen? That's what we have to do. We're releasing a prophetic word. We have to give voice to what the Holy Spirit is saying. See? And once we do that, I'm going to give you uh, one more. And this is going to be the last one and we'll cover the rest next week. Manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Manifestation means to see and behold, to gaze by voluntary observation. It is to inspect, to appear, to discern, to clearly see, to experience, to perceive, to uncover, to lay bare, to reveal. It is also to open to sight, signifying shining. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. Look what Paul said. In each one of us, God shows in certain ways that his spirit is present in us. He gives certain gifts to each of us so that we can help each other. See? God gives us the gift to work for each one of us. And those, those are things we have to keep in mind, that when God does these things, that's what we have to realize, why God is doing them, why God did it. It's, it's, it's for the whole part of the edifying of the body of Christ. And this is what we have to allow to go on. Amen? We have to allow that. If we're going to speak the prophetic word of God, see, everyone shout the pro. Prophetic word of God is what I need to speak over my life and over my family's life. So you have to be able to do it. You have to be able to do it. You know, those things are just prevalent to us. These things are ours. It is ours. This is why when we're not walking in the spirit, we miss out on all of God's blessings. If you are living in lack, it's because you're not walking in God's will. You're not, you're not listening to God. You're not doing what the word says. So, you know, because if you're doing what the word says, God says that, look, he that comes to me first has to believe that I am God and I'm a rewarder of him that diligently seek me. So God cannot lie. If you're living in lack, it's because... You have not learned to trust God, or you're afraid to trust God. See? And that's what it's all about. Because, see, whatever your desire is, God has it. He has something that, that can fit your budget. See? God has something that can fit your budget. It's called favor. God will give you unmerited favor that we did not deserve, we cannot buy, but God will give it. But we have to learn to start speaking that prophetic word of God. You know, that's what we have to do. Amen. Do y'all receive that tonight? Amen. Listen, amen. Bradell, can you end our... We want to thank those that are watching this message tonight. We pray that it is a blessing to you. Tune in with us next week as we continue in our study of speaking the prophetic word of God. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. We're always praying for you. Amen.